Hey, what's up guys? John from Mongo Fishing. Today I'm on the Monster Bass channel and I want to talk to you guys about buzz baits, the Excite Baits Pro Series Buzz Fire to be specific. But before I get into that, go ahead and hit the subscribe button right down there along with the bell notification button so you guys get notified every single time Monster Bass comes out with another video. My channel will be linked down in the description below. I'd be honored if you came over there and checked me out also. But let's get into this. This is the Excitebaits Pro Series Buzz Fire that came in the August 2020 Monster Bass Topwater Takeover Box. Now, if you're new to using buzz baits, they are super simple to use. There are a few things you can do to make it a little better. First thing you want to do with any buzz bait that has a metal blade, because not all buzz baits have metal blades, is crimp that little rivet right there, crimp it in place. And what I mean by that is grab yourself a pair of pliers and just crimp it in place so that little thing does not spin. If you have a metal blade like this Pro Series Buzzfire does, you want this metal blade rubbing on that little rivet and eventually it'll get a squeaky sound. Buzz baits get better with age and the longer you throw them, the more you use them, the squeakier they get and uh, that just seems to attract more bass. Now, when I'm throwing a buzz bait, I like to add a trailer. So this is a Stanley Ribbit Frog that came out of my August 2020 box also. And all you do is just thread this right on here just like you would a jig trailer or anything like that. Just thread it right on up, push it up on there. And now you have a nice chunk of soft plastic on the back of your buzz bait that not only adds bulk to your buzz bait, so it gives it a larger profile in the water, but it also makes it feel like something to eat when the bass grab it. See, if you're just running a plain buzz bait, which you can, and you will get bit, the, uh, the bass grab it and it feels like a giant chunk of steel and lead and they let go pretty quick. If you have a trailer on there, whether it's a toad or a swim bait or whatever soft plastic on there, the bass will hold on to it a little longer, allowing you just a little bit longer to get that hook set. Another advantage of having a soft plastic on there is this extra flat space right here uh, allows you to skip underneath docks and underneath overhangs and stuff like that a little better if you're somebody who, uh, who likes to do stuff like that. If you don't, well then don't. But that is another advantage of running a soft plastic trailer on the back. Now, trailer hook. Sometimes I'll run a trailer hook on the back of these also. That really depends on the type of cover that I'm fishing. If I'm fishing stuff that's really snaggy, then no, I don't, I don't run a trailer hook. If I'm running stuff that's relatively open water, like burning down docks or burning down riprap or seawalls or something like that, where there's not a lot of snags, then yeah, I'll typically run a trailer hook. Not always, really depends on how I feel and how well the bass are eating it. If they're just doing some tail grabs, then yeah, trailer hook. If they're just consuming this thing, no problem. I don't see a point in trailer hook. So uh, trailer hook or no trailer hook, totally up to you and situationally dependent. All right, so where do I fish it? I kind of covered that a little bit a minute ago. Um, I'll burn it down the side of docks, skip it underneath docks, uh, sea walls, rip wrap, loose vegetation, submerged vegetation, um, you know, sticks, brush, whatever. Now, as designed, they're relatively snagless. They will go up over top of the logs and stuff like that because they're going to be they're going to be going through the water like this, right? They will occasionally get snagged again. That's why I determine if I'm using a, a trailer hook or not is situationally dependent on where I'm, where I'm fishing it. Also where I'm fishing determines the type of line I use. Uh, if I'm in a snaggy area, I'll probably run braid. If I'm wide open water, then uh, I'll run fluoro. So rod, reel, and line. All right. Um, I'm not a big proponent of you, of people buying a specific rod for a specific technique. Okay. So me personally, um, you know, I'm six foot six. I throw almost everything I, I throw on a seven foot or above. Uh, this right here is a, uh, seven, two TP one black lose. It's their jig rod. It's a medium, heavy, fast action tip. For me, th this is what I prefer to throw my buzz baits on my larger, three eighths ounce, half ounce, stuff like that. I'll throw it on the same rod I throw a swim jig on. If I'm going through thick vegetation and snaggy stuff, I'll run it on 50 or 65 pound braid. All right, depending on where I'm fishing, 
I may use like something like this little eighth ounce dude if I'm burning this down like a seawall or skipping under the dock or someplace where it's not very snaggy, I'll run that on fluoro. Again, I use braid in areas that are super snaggy and I use fluoro in areas that aren't. That's just my personal preference. I know a lot of guys will run braid everywhere. Um, now I know what you're thinking, fluoro and top water don't really get along and fluoro sinks and etc. but buzz baits for the most part sink also. The, you can run fluoro on a buzz bait because the majority of your line is out of the water. Unlike a popper or a walking bait where your line is sitting in the water, the majority of your line is out of the water with a buzz bait and so the amount uh, that it's going to sink because of your line is negligible. Hardly any of your line is in the water. So that's, that's pretty much a moot point with buzz baits. All right, eventually you're gonna catch a big one, and he's just gonna just crush this thing, bend it all out of whack, and it's not gonna run right. All you have to do to get this thing running right is line it up and bend things back into position again. Every buzz bait, it's just a matter of time before a big one just, just destroys it the way that it, it looks and it no longer uh, looks, you know, like it came from the factory. Just bend things back in place the way they were, line them up, make sure everything is nice and straight, and it'll work again. And that's that, guys. So uh, here's a little catch uh, I did right here on this same lake. Um, so enjoy. Oh man, please let that be on camera, because that was an epic freaking hit. That's on this month's Monster Bass Buzzbait. Look at that toad. Oh. Nice. Yep, it is on. Look at that, guys. Let's get a weight on him. Three eleven. Three eleven was an inside job. <laughs> it does. Hopefully, I got that freaking blow up on video because that was epic. I mean, he came completely out of the water to hit that. All right, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Again, if you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button right down there, along with the bell notification button in case you guys didn't do that earlier. Again, my name is John from Mongo Fishing. My channel will be linked down in the description below. I'd be honored if you came over there and checked my channel out also. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Drop a comment below. Feel free to ask any questions. And as always, guys, get out on the water, be safe, and go stick some lips.